I'm Joanne Worley, and I've got a secret. <laughs> From Hollywood, the show that reveals all, I've got a secret. And now, let's meet the star of I've Got a Secret, Steve Allen. Thank you very much. My thanks to the orchestra, too. <laughs> and welcome to the new I've Got a Secret. Tonight's panel is really glowing and dazzling and marvelous and adorable. We have such terrific panelists over there as lovely Broadway and television actress Anita Gillette and the popular TV host and country squire Jean Rayburn, the beautiful actress and TV personality Stephanie Edwards, and Laugh-In's own Richard Dawson. There's our panel. <laughs> How's Helen, Jean? She's very well, thank you. Good. Helen is Jean's wife. <laughs> Hello, Good. Helen, wherever you are. <laughs> and hi, Jean, as long as we're going to get that personal. That's right. How now, let's you? get our tonight's first contestant out here and see what happens. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at Princess Eustacia, the fire eater, <laughs> from the Circus Bartok. Now, here is her husband, Count Desmond. My name is Count Desmond. I'm the sword swallower, and I'm going to perform a circus first here this evening and allow my wife to insert a blade. This has never been done before by anyone in the circus world. And if you would, Steve, I'd like to ask you over here and have oh. you pull the sword out. Well, uh, I don't want to just leave it in there, so... <laughs> That's not. I guess I'd better pull it out. Wow. Yick. Why don't I just go like that and it'll jump, huh? Look, this is icky. This man has a fever. Obviously, panel, that wasn't their secret of the game would be over already, right? Right. <laughs> right. But uh, the secret is in two parts. I'll enumerate for them. <laughs> I'll enumerate them for you, part one and part two. You see how I help you out? Princess, I understand that you were part of the secret concerns something that happened recently when you were preparing for your act. Is that right? Right. Okay, if you'll whisper to me, we'll let the audience know what I'm talking about. Oh. <laughs> Good for you. Well, something that happened while she was, as I say, preparing for her act, and we'll start the questioning with our old friend, Jean Raper. All right, thank you, Steve. Now, Princess, this thing that happened while you were preparing for your act, can we assume it had something to do with fire? Yes. And with that burning magic wand? Was that involved? No. <laughs> uh, what is that? Already? <laughs> A buzzer Call the right fire department. Uh, thank you, Gene. One down, three to go. And it's time to hear from Stephanie. I really expected him to establish more than this. Well, talk to him out in the I did the best I could. <laughs> <laughs> He'll light a fire for you later. You have to talk with him. Princess, does it have to do with an accident uh, that happened to you and your, with your fire? Yes. Could be so described. Um, uh, did you... Uh, <laughs> Did you set fire to yourself uh, in some way? No. She's apparently going to think that over for I some time, so. but I can assure you she didn't <laughs> oh. do that. Uh, now, that's two down, two to go. Richard Dawson. Princess, it's nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't run into very many princesses, do you, in your no, I normal have routine? Yeah. I do have some marshmallows, and I wonder if we could get together after the show. <laughs> Uh, Princess, would it be anything to do this accident that happened with the fluid that you use yes. uh, in your act? It would. You haven't run out of gas, have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Did oh. Three down and one to go. I need it. It's up to you. Oh, okay. It had something to do with your fluid. I mean, on your thing. Right? <laughs> your, the fluid on your thing. Did you... Did you... Did you... No, I'm getting there. Don't worry. I know 
it's about your fluid. Uh, the, your fluid, did, it, did, it caught fire? Yes. Did, you, did it catch on to your eyelashes or anything like that? Did it, it, did it catch on to anything in the dressing room? <laughs> yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. Did it catch on to the curtains or, or your costume in the dressing room? Did your whole room blow up? And leave your you're, fluid there. You're very close to the, uh, to the answer. Anita. Really? See? It has something to do with a fire in her dressing room. Yeah, I'll be glad to tell you. Oh, was okay. it the beard? <laughs> the game being over and all that. Oh. <laughs> was it the beard of her hubby? Uh, no. Nor the beard Could of your been. neck. No, there are number, any guessing. limited number of things that it was not, but I'll be happy to tell you what it was. <laughs> Well, let us guess, Steve. It was her dress. I'm sorry. They're just going to go on playing the game, even though they don't know what's over. No, the secret was that she accidentally burned down her trailer. <laughs> no. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> One thing I've never understood about the show is why people applaud for things like that. Yeah. And the secret was she ran over a nun with a steamroller. You know, and everybody goes, yay! Hey. You shouldn't applaud for terrible things like that. How did it happen, Princess? I was filling my gas containers, and the gas burner was on in the house, and everything just exploded. Ooh. Let that be a lesson to you. Very, very just Did you could get I just out ask? right? Yeah. You were okay, though. Right. Your mouth is moving, and another voice is coming out, Richard. <laughs> just an act where, but I was wondering, where were you during the Bel Air fire? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, she and Belle were out for air, I guess. <laughs> now, the other part of the secret, and I told you indeed there was another part, concerns uh, the fact that the fire was so serious that Count Desmond's swords were literally ruined, consumed in the flames, but the show must go on and all that, so he swallowed something else uh, on that occasion. Count, would you whisper what it was, please? This is real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We'll start the questioning this time with Gene Rayburn. All right. So you swallowed something else other than a sword, right? Yes. And uh, we can assume it was a reasonably long object, can we? Yes. And uh, was it flat rather than round? In this general sense that yeah. a sword might be, yes. Yeah. Very well, good start, Gene. One do down, three to go. Stephanie. Count Desmond, when they applauded for you, it seemed almost kind of congratulatory. Listen, they applaud for everything around <laughs> It means nothing what they applaud for us again. Uh, was this thing that you swallowed a kitchen utensil? No, it was not. Uh, Very good start. Two. Two down, mm. two to go. Dickie? Uh, Count, did you swallow your pride? <laughs> <laughs> Be <Yes>. careful, honey. <laughs> you did. <laughs> no. That's not a secret. Uh, was it m made of metal, the object you swallowed? Yes, it was. Three down, you one to go. Like Anita? Is this something that you might find outside of the house, like in a garage? You might. You might? Is it, is it, would it be considered hardware? Mm, not in the usual sense. Uh, I'll oh, be right out. Oh, Come in. I He's in a hurry, however. The trailer he burned down. No, the secret. <laughs> the buzzer burned down. The secret was that Count Desmond uh, swallowed a coat hanger. See? Oh, uh, oh that was mine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this happens to be the very coat hanger that he improvised on the moment and of course he took the coat off otherwise he would have had a coated tongue and now ladies and gentlemen <laughs> thank you very much both of you for being with us and watch your step as you go through all Now we welcome our next contestant, the well-known professional basketball player from the Phoenix Suns, Mr. Dick Van Arsdale. Hey! We're very happy to have you with us, and I've got a secret. Thank you, Steve. It's my pleasure. How long have you uh, been playing professionally, Dick? Next year will be my eighth year. Mm -hmm. And uh, you play in the same league, as I guess most of our sports fans are aware. Same league as the Los Angeles Lakers. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they won 33 in a row uh, in one recent season. Do you think the Suns might do that someday? It's very unlikely. We did win nine games in a row last season, but uh, I think... That, it, that's very impressive. Which is very good, really, and it's... Uh, Almost a miracle that the Lakers could win 33 games in a row. Uh -huh. Fair enough. Well, now, panel, that you've had a chance to meet this gentleman, would you please hide your eyes, put your little heads down on the table. Don't peek, please. And uh, we, during the meantime, will show the audience what this gentleman's secret is. And here we go. All right, 
panel. You may put your heads up now. Panel, wake up. They've fallen asleep. Coming ready or not. <laughs> the secret involves something that this gentleman happens to be in addition to being a basketball player. And let's see. We'll start the game this time with Stephanie. Yeah, uh, you are this in addition to being a basketball player. Would we have to know this? Uh, I mean, would we be able to know this only if you took off more of your clothes? <laughs> No. That sounds very nice, but that's not. Does it? Yeah. Uh, he seems awfully young for having played basketball for eight years. Um, and I'm sure that the answer to this is no, but does it have to do with your age at all? No, my age has nothing to do with it. Is it something that you perform? <laughs> no. Uh, is it something that, uh, does it have to do with something you, you're hiding in a po concealed pocket somewhere? No. <laughs> oh. Okay, heads down again, panel. Don't peek What's boo this? because Gosh. we have something on. All your heads down. Richard, put your two heads down, would you please? <laughs> All right. Now, in just a moment, keep your heads down. Just a moment, we're going to be able to uh, go on with the questioning. And uh, I guess we're now ready for the questions from Anita. And you may all lift your heads. From me? Yes, Anita. Oh, me? It's, it's something's happening right now every time we put down our head, isn't it? No, no the, the secret is not happening right now. The it's secret is an ongoing happening. situation. Well, while we keep putting down our heads, must be some None reason, right? None of your right? biswax. I, I know you have a brother. Do, is it, does it have anything to do with your brother? Yes, it does. It does? Oh, good old Tom? <laughs> good old Tom. Is, is Tom here? Is it the thing that you're a twin, twin. or something? That's it. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Little, little did we know that we would have an avid sports fan I on the panel and knock the game off right away. Uh, while your heads were down, uh, Dick was trading places with his brother Tom, who was also, as maybe some of the old men watching don't know, a pro player and a very good one for the Kansas City Kings, Tom Van Arsdale. Now, panel, uh, the twin brother has been on stage all this time. Do you have any idea where he might be? If you want to look around, you can around certainly, uh, no, no, stop. certainly check, see where he might be. Behind the... No, he's not no. behind the... You're not really giving it a very good search, I must say. Right there. there he is, yes. <laughs> As you can see, these gentlemen are really uh, identical twins, uh, not in the scientific sense. No two things are identical, strictly speaking. The hair color is just a tiny bit, bit different. Yeah. Which of you is the better player? Well, Steve, we always uh, keep the family... Uh, Cohesive. I, I always say he's better, and he always says that I'm better. It's a nice arrangement. When we're together. When you're together. <laughs> uh, which, <laughs> which you was the older? I'm older. No, I'm not older. You're no, older. I'm, <laughs> Tom's older by 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Well, as you go through life, listen to your older brother. <laughs> and thank you both very much, gentlemen. Good luck to you. Nice to see you. We'll be back with our guest star, Joanne Woolley, after this commercial time -out. Now we welcome tonight's guest star, the shy, soft-spoken, Joanne Worley. Oh, you gave me the bounce tape, so I was like, nice <laughs> gentleman you are. It's not definite. <laughs> welcome oh. to I've Got a Secret, Joanne. Oh, I look funny. Anyway. I don't think, well, you are funny, but, but you look okay. I understand that your secret concerns a singular honor that has been conferred upon you. you yes, my secret concern that I had something named after me today. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, we always say, well, if you whisper your secret, but Jean, oh. can she whisper, do you think? I'm not too sure. She'll probably scream her secret. Do your best, Joy. Oh, <laughs> that's what she had named after The audience has just been told what she had named after her, and it's up for me to know and you guys to find out. <laughs> and we'll start the questioning with Dickie Dawson. Oh, my love, my uh, you had something named after you. Was it the Holland Tunnel? <laughs> <laughs> that was named after her mom, which is another name. That and something else. Was, uh, was the honor given to you today here in town? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Was it a food? Mm -hmm. Interesting uh, question. At this particular mm, point, we would have answer? to say no, right? <laughs> was it a food? Let's flip one down. <laughs> Let's give him a no on that. Was it a we'll beverage? Say... Was it a beverage? No. 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 I certainly not a food? Not. Did, 
Did we get a food or not? Well, uh, assume it's we'd food we'd or better beverage. say no, because to say yes would mislead you, and that's the last thing I'd want to do. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> well, it certainly has a very interesting possibility. <laughs> uh, let me see. Would it be a piece of clothing, an article of clothing, my love? No! <laughs> There's even a sense in which, ultimately, forget it. That's one down and three to go. Anita? Um, it, it wouldn't be a street or a building. A street. No, Rudy Valley tried that, heaven knows. <laughs> uh, and it's not a fruit or anything. No! <laughs> You're racy, aren't you? <laughs> uh, but it, but it, is it related to food in any way? It is, but that would mislead you. You'll be misled. Mislead. Put it out of your mind. Okay, but uh, it, does is it? Uh, um, it's not. It's not a building. Is it? Is it a a, a, a day of the month? No. <laughs> Let's give him a clue. Let's give him a clue. Go yeah. ahead. Boom. <laughs> All right. Just excellent. They named a down, species of frog after you. Yes. Yeah. What? Isn't a, it isn't literally Gina, an entire species, but Joanne's secret is the audience knows that she had a specific one little old frog named after her today. It's a special kind of frog, though, isn't it? It's a champion! <laughs> it's a terrific jumper, and it's going to compete in the famous frog jumping contest in Calaveras County, California. Oh. Right. A big uh, jumper is what it is. just happens that Joanne uh, not only was named after the frog, but she brought her frog along to the studio. Oh, excuse me, I'll get it. And uh, <laughs> what are you going to do with that frog, Joanne? Well, let's, we're going to have a if contest. If you kiss it, it'll turn into Robert Clary. <laughs> <laughs> only with funny legs. <laughs> um, we are all going to do it. They get to do it also. We're all going to have a contest. We're all going to make our frogs jump, okay? Frog jumping contest. There'll be teams. The Good. The boys team, the girls team, and my team. Okay? All righty. All right. Where do we go? Where's Joanne at? Well, Joanne! Let's... Go to your place and let your... Froggy. Hello? Her frog is named Joanne. And, uh... Where's our start place? Shall we all... Oh, this dinner looks like... What I'm going to do is put our starting pad down here, so to speak, our starting circle. And we have a gentleman who, who is an official frog trainer. He's also from Calaveras County. Professor William C. Steed, president of Croker College. Here he is. <laughs> I think the audience would be as serious. I don't even know my own frog. It's hard to say. I think the audience would probably be interested to know how the uh, professor. <laughs> Good evening. I think the uh, <laughs> there's another program going on here. And now for the news. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'll try it again. Professor, how are you? Uh, how do you train a frog? Well, you see, first when we get a frog in there, Croker College, well, we hypnotize it. You know, frogs are a whole lot like people, and they have hang-ups and inhibitions, and so we, uh, we, we put them to sleep, and uh, uh, just like, <laughs> then we get rid of their, their, their hang-ups and inhibitions, and then we play these positive thinking records. You see, we train people to be positive thinkers, and so it works on frogs. I wouldn't be surprised. What do those letters mean, DFP, on your hat? That's doctor of frog psychology. <laughs> and, uh, a likely so story. <laughs> The thing is that we play them these records on self-confidence and uh, personality, you know, get a good self-image. In other words, we full, fill them full of positive thinking instead of buckshot. Fair enough. Well, let's get down to business now. It's the men against the women. Joanne, since you're our special guest, you're going to go first. You get to hold it for a while. Oh, I ain't going to hold that. No, no. I wouldn't even hold it if it was a wallet. Are you kidding? Where did it go? Now, put... Put your frog, sweetheart, Joanne. Joanne, this is Earth calling, Joanne Worley. Put your frog in the thing, we'll blow the whistle. And it has to reach the finish line before the buzzer sounds. Okay. One, two, three. And you jump. Don't jump so close. There he goes. No, no fair touching it, Joanne. You lose two points. For and now... Now it's time for the gentlemen. Now it's time for the gentlemen, Richard Dawson and Gene Rayburn. You, it is rather icky to pick up, so you don't have to. Just dump it out on the pad. That's the idea, Gene. Okay. It's in the starting spot. One, two, three. And it's underway. You can tickle them. Only a tickle. Not 
too close, Gene. Go, oh, you're the winner. Go, go. Apparently, Gene's frog. Uh, yes, and as far as he's concerned, the day is over. Oh. No, this was yours here, Dickie. This you and you and Gene are a uh, are a team. And now it's time for the ladies, Anita and Stephanie. If you'll. You just put any frog uh, so conceived and so dedicated into that little circle there, and we'll go on with the. She has a lot of nerve. She touched the little son of a gun. One, two, three, go! Don't stand too close to him, or you'll break his thing down. He's on the move. He must have a lot of laughs up in Calaveras County. That's remarkable. Well, in the, in the opinion of our judges who are over at the side, we have no winner because <laughs> two of the frogs uh, cut out all together. Joanne cheated. And Joanne cheated. So it just goes to show you that at least the races aren't fixed. Well, <laughs> thank you, Bill. Oh. Isn't it scary? <laughs> thank you very much, Joanne. Thank you, Professor. We'll be right back. No, thank you. Meet the Frog returns after these words. Maybe. Well, sir, according to the old clock on the wall, it would be better to get a new clock on the wall. Hey, Gene Rayburn's wife, Helen, before we say good night, just opened a new bookstore. That's right. She opened a bookshop in Osterville called Sign of the Owl. Osterville, Mass. Massachusetts. On Cape Cod. Sign of the Owl. Thank you. That's... Hey, this show is terrific. I was never on the old one, but this new one is marvelous. Well, you're Don't going to be on this agree? one a lot if we have well, our way. You. Hey, thanks very much. Dickie, Anita, Stephanie, thank you all. We'll see you all later, gang. Next week.